We're going to go ahead and start with the crayfish first. And as we take the crayfish, we're going to look at the difference between the tennas and the tenules. Now the tennas are the single long sense receptors. These are the tennas. And I'm going to remove those and set them there. There's one. I'm going to remove the second one and set it there. Now, as I removed the second one, actually, some of the tenules came off, which are the shorter, smaller ones. And they are usually in groups of two. And you can see right here, you can see the tenules, which are basically it's jointed and then it's a group of two. So I'm gonna remove the tenules. So you can see the tennis are long while the tenules are going to be shorter in a group of two, or jointed. Now I'm gonna take a look at the chelipids and the walking legs. So these are going to be the walking legs down here. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna remove these. These are the walking legs. You can see there's little hair fibers, Looks like a little claw there, a little bit. These are the walking legs. Now I said four, that means there's four on one side. We have four more, and I'm going to remove these. Okay, so there's a total of four pair, or eight legs. Now we have the chelipeds, which are the claws. I'm going to remove those, and you can see the chelipede. This is a pincher. You can see the jointed structure of the chelipede, very hard exoskeleton. If I look at the walking legs and compare it to the chelipede, the walking legs are also jointed. Hard exoskeleton. It's not as hard as the chelipede. The walking legs are a little squishier. The chelipede, lots of bumps on it, very hard, very sharp on the tip. Now, if we go back to the crayfish, you can actually see the segmented parts. You can see the segmented parts in the abdomen. Segmented meaning separations. You can see some of the separations in the cephalothorax, okay, the carapace. You can see the separations in this chelipede. I'll remove that chelipede. Hello, hello. You can see the compound eye, and then you can also see the mouthpieces, which we're gonna look at now. Now, these little guys look like little legs, but these are actually called maxilla peds. Ped meaning foot. Now, they look like a foot, but they're really not. They're like little arms. Now, these maxilla peds bring the food close. Now, underneath that, we have these little tiny smaller structures. There's some that look like little spoons, little fingers. These are the little maxillas. Now these little maxillas are inside here, and here's some that look like little spoons right here. If I open them up, pull them down a little bit, you can see the mandibles. Now right here are the mandibles. These mandibles are very hard. You can even see the teeth on them. Now they're not literal teeth, they're just jagged pieces. Now I'm gonna rip them out in just a second, but you can actually see how, okay, they're going to, here's the opening, the space. So they're going to be opening and closing side to side. Now mandibles are these uh, chewing pieces. The first one we saw was the maxilla pad. It looked like a foot, it brought the food close. Then you had all these little spoons and fingers, these little maxillas, and they brought the food and positioned the food into the maxilla pad and the maxilla pad would chew the food, I'm sorry, into the mandible and the mandible would chew the food and crush it, okay, and crush it with these hard structures here. Or I just open it up a little bit. Now our mandible is the lower jaw. Our maxilla is actually the upper jaw, our mandible, okay, we only have one, goes up and down. So let me pull out the mandibles. Here's one mandible. You can see that. Okay, very hard. You can see the little teeth or the little ridges on it. Okay. So here now you can see the maxilla ped. 
Okay, this foot-like structure. Okay, a little jointed. Here's your maxillas, little fingers and spoons. And here's one of your mandibles, the hard teeth-like structures. Okay. Now let's move to the abdomen. And we can actually see underneath, okay, this is actually the cephalothorax. You can see where the walking legs were and the chelipeds. But right here, the separation, this is actually where the abdomen starts. But right here we have the anus. Okay, right here is the anus. Uh, right at, basically, uh, the little flippers. The flippers are called the uropod and telson. Okay, but these little tiny, thin, soft little legs, these are not very strong at all. These are the swimmerettes. They just cause a uh, little propulsion propulsion and kicking, okay? And basically the crayfish or the lobster can also turn its abdomen pull away, okay? So you can uh, take a look at the swimmerettes on a lateral view, but then you can also look at the swimmerettes on a ventral view, okay? These are the swimmerettes. This one had, has very large swimmerettes, so this most likely was a male, okay? Females are gonna have smaller petite swim rats. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up the cephalothorax, the carapace. I'm gonna pull this little guy open. Okay, you probably heard the cracking. Right here, these little feather-like structures, very soft, very moist. Uh, these are the gills. And these little gills, okay, basically allow for respiration. You can see the jointing here. We got one joint. We got a second joint. We have a third joint of gills, four, five, six. Okay, so we have quite a few rows of gills. And you can go ahead and see how it's very feather like, it looks very fluffy. And basically, the crayfish will hold water in its gills. Uh, crabs will do this, uh, allowing the crab or the crayfish to go on land. Uh, this is just like as if we were swimming in water. We would hold our breath. Uh, we can go in that other environment and still survive, but there's always a matter of time before we drown. In the same way, if they run out of moisture in their gills uh, as they hold their water, like we hold our breath, uh, they can die if they run out of water. Okay, so there's the gills. I'll put the cephalothorax back on. And let's say goodbye to Mr. Crayfish or Crawdad. Have some. You probably think of centipedes as tiny, squishy, bothersome things cowering in your garden. Meet the South American centipede, about a foot long, in your face, and full of surprises. First surprise, this centipede is still growing, so it's got to shed so a new exoskeleton can grow on its body. Like a debutante wriggling out of a too tight evening gown, the centipede has to squirm, slink, twitch, writhe, and ooze out of its confinement. Finally, finally it gets out of its old body armor. Now it has to plump up fast before its epidermis secretes chitin too soon. If the chitin hardens into a shell while the centipede is still on the smallish side, the shedding would have been pointless. Hey, what could be more convenient snacking than that handy old exoskeleton? What do you call this? I mean, it's not cannibalism because that's eating another of your own species. I guess you could call this um, auto-grazing. This is a millipede. Millipedes are not insects, but belong with the insects in the phylum Arthropoda. All arthropods have bodies made of many parts or segments. 
They also have an exoskeleton, which is a hard covering on the outside of their bodies that functions like a skeleton. Arthropod means jointed legs or appendages. Appendages of arthropods may be modified for feeling, feeding, walking, and sometimes swimming. Millipede means thousand feet, but millipedes actually have between 50 and 150 pairs of legs. Millipedes have segmented antennae. Millipedes spend most of their life in moist soil and decaying vegetation, where they also overwinter. Millipedes are often confused with centipedes because they look similar, but they are really quite different. It is important to be able to tell millipedes and centipedes apart because some centipedes have poisonous bites. Millipedes do not. Millipedes have a body that is divided into a head and a cylindrical or long tube-like trunk. The trunk is segmented. Adult millipedes have two pairs of legs attached to most body segments. Matching legs on each side of a millipede move together, and many of its legs touch the ground at the same time. This movement of the legs enables the millipede to glide along smoothly. The legs also can help push the animal through rotting wood and soil. Millipedes have a number of ways to defend themselves. One way is to run and hide in narrow cracks or burrow into the soil. Some kinds of millipedes coil into a spiral, and in this way, the hard exoskeleton protects them from predators. Millipedes hide from light. They are active at night. Watch them eat cucumber in the dark. Millipedes use mandibles for chewing. Millipedes are nature's recyclers. Since they are scavengers, they eat just about any dead plant material. Most kinds of millipedes eat decaying leaves and wood and other small pieces of dead plants. Dead organic material is also called detritus. Detritus feeders break down plant material by chewing it. During digestion, carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere to be reabsorbed by living plants. Without detritus feeders, our soils and water bodies would be buried in dead organic materials. Many millipedes have eyes at the sides of their head. Adult millipedes need to mate in order for the female to lay fertile eggs. In the spring, millipedes lay from 20 to 300 eggs in the soil. In order to grow, young millipedes have to molt often. With each molt, additional segments and legs are added to the body until the millipede reaches maturity. Sexual maturity is reached in two to five years, depending on the species. And let's move to the grasshopper. But you can actually see right here, uh, this is actually a female grasshopper. And the reason we know is basically the oviductal opening to lay eggs. Now we're gonna look at some of the parts of the grasshopper. Uh, basically, uh, you can look in uh, the notes, uh, the grasshopper's antennas uh, do come off and they're very segmented. And you look in the notes and you can actually see uh, the segmentation of the grasshopper's antennas. Uh, the grasshopper has a separate head 
where the crayfish does not, uh, the grasshopper can move its head. Uh, this little guy is pretty dried out. So uh, right here is the separation. A lot of the grasshoppers, I can kind of move the head up and down. And then you have a thorax, which thorax meaning chest region. And then you have a long abdomen. Attached to the thorax, you have uh, four or two pairs of walking legs. And then you have the long jumping leg. Uh, here is the long jumping leg. You can see the different jointed parts to it. And you can see the little uh, fibers there. Okay, and it's a lot longer than the walking legs. Now, in the mouth parts, the grasshopper does have uh, something like the maxilliped, uh, little palps. Uh, and we said that we heard the word palp from the clam, bring food in, and then it has a maxilla, and then mandible to chew and bite um, grass and other leaves. Uh, we have the compound eyes. Now, up here, we also have simple eyes, which are little photoreceptors, but the compound eyes have actual layers. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at the wings. We have the hind wing and we have the fore wing. And the hind wing is underneath, but on top is the fore wing. The fore wing is the actual protective wing. And this guy is dried out and falling apart. Basically, okay, we have two sets of wing. We have the protective wing, and then underneath it, we have the flying wing. So I'm removing, okay, uh, the fore wing, okay, the protective wing. You can see right down here is the flying wing. Now, some of them are very beautiful, very colorful, okay. So the flying wing is the hind wing, while the fore wing. Think of the front is the protective wing. Right underneath the wings, if I remove the wing, uh, there is a little eardrum. Very delicate, very soft. And if I tap it, it will break. Okay, it broke very easily. You can see the little eardrum okay, right in here. So this is called the tympanic membrane. Now, of course, uh, our tympanic membrane, our eardrum is in our head. Uh, there's a lot of nerves that go to the eardrum, even with the grasshopper. And so basically, um, which is quite interesting, it's at the segment point between the thorax and the abdomen. Our eardrum is not in our abdomen region. And then we have something else that's pretty interesting. On the side of the abdomen we have these little segments or joints just like the crayfish but along here along this little light area we have little breathing holes uh, just like we breathe through our nose and our mouth the grasshopper is going to breathe through these little breathing holes called spiracles and then the spiracles connect to the trachea which is like the throat in the abdomen now our abdomen is like our belly region okay that's where all the intestines are Okay, so that's another thing that's different from humans and grasshoppers. We don't have our breathing holes or our breathing area and trachea in our stomach, which they do.